Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's conversation on the YouTube Creators Hub podcast. Dusty here, as always, host of the show. Joined today by Mr. Brad Bache from the Butcher Wizard YouTube channel. So let me tell you briefly about Brad. Brad has been making videos on the Butchered Wizard YouTube channel for almost two years. And when I tell you how big the channel is, you're going to be shocked because that's a short amount of time to be at, let's see where he is right now, as recording this episode, 241 thousand subscribers which is just astonishing the butchered wizard channel teaches people how to save money by cutting meat in their homes by themselves professionally brad has worked in the food business for over 20 years and loves to teach all that he's learned brad how are you doing today i'm doing well thanks for having me i really appreciate it absolutely so the butcher wizard is the name of the channel which i think just off the jump is just a clever name i love that um you know you're a butcher you're teaching people how to do their own cuts with their meat at home and there's so many elements where we could go with this but before i get too excited give me the origin story two years ago you said you had listened to this podcast i'll kind of hold you to that you were trying to learn you were trying to figure it out tell me the origin story and how this whole thing started yeah, after being a stay-at-home dad for a couple of years, I went back into the workforce and I was in a, uh, actually trying to get back into it. I was in a grocery, prepared foods at a grocery store. And um, I still wanted to teach. I, I, I used to teach culinary school. I, I, and so it was really important to me to kind of um, get back in, into that teaching realm. So I thought I would start a YouTube channel. And I always loved teaching. That was my favorite class to teach was meat preparation or meat butchery. So, um, I basically started just making YouTube videos with my iPhone in my kitchen and, um, you know, my eighth video just took off. It just, it, I took a ribeye, a whole ribeye from Costco. I showed people how to, you know, make it into ribeye steaks and, and save money doing so. And it just shot up. It went over a million views in four days and I was kind of off to the races. So it was a crazy experience. <laughs> Do you believe that the money saving aspect of your channel is a big part of kind of the growth in the community you've built? Because as expensive as, as things are getting, I think that any time people think they can save money on a luxury, which a ribeye steak is or a nice cut of meat is. So you're teaching people a skill set, but you're also helping them save money and be more financial re financially responsible. Yes, I think that was a big, uh, a big part of it, and that was part of my strategy going in um, when I started to to do some of these videos of like, hey, how, what is the best value I can provide to a person? So it's not only teaching them how to cut the steaks themselves and giving them the confidence to do so, but it's also that's how you get in the door. Is like, hey, I'm going to save you money, and um, I think that the thumbnail I stumbled into this thumbnail that was really good. It showed kind of a cost savings between um, cutting your ribeye at home and buying at the store. So, I mean, all, it all came together in this perfect storm, which I did not know. Like I kind of happened to by accident. <laughs> it's a very popular thumbnail, right? Like it's something that's trendy right now is the, you know, $100 versus $1, or in your case, you know, what it would be to save 80 bucks on a hundred dollar piece of meat or whatever the comparison people love that it's very visual you can you can you can understand it quickly what the video is about um and it's interesting that you stumbled upon that so quickly uh upon launching the channel now once the channel started growing rapidly after this video took off um what were some growth things that you might have struggled with kind of I guess you would say kind of the learning phase of the YouTube channel. Were there some mistakes that you made early on that looking back, you're like, man, I, I shouldn't have done that. I, I really do. I, the problem with having a video, like the viral video is a blessing and a curse. It's like uh, it, when it happens so early, you don't know what you did to make um, mm. people watch. So the rest of my videos or uh, the subsequent videos were kind of like, okay, now that I've taught someone how to do this, what are the next skills they would need? Um, and, and those videos just didn't do very, didn't do very well. And then, um, you know, it's just a constant search for that viral video again. And I think it's, it's almost like when you, if you went to the casino and you put $1 in a slot machine and won the first time that you pulled the arm, it's like, how do I get that dopamine hit again? And you're continually chasing that. So it's just, I think it's just a, a constant struggle to find out, okay, what what can I do? Because 
there's only so many cuts of meat at Costco that I can do this with. So eventually I'm going to run out of stuff. So uh, trying to replicate the success, right. Of just like, Hey, this video popped off. Why? And early on as a creator, you're still learning yourself. We're always learning, but you're looking at it and you're trying to replicate it. And so sometimes you can get into a chase. Wouldn't you agree where you start chasing that you know, format and it ends up hurting your content as a whole. So I think that it's interesting to hear you say that, that, Hey, you know, you need to get your systems down, your routine down and kind of go from there. Now let's talk about that for a minute about consistencies and routine. What is your cadence on the butcher wizard channel? Has it changed over time? And what have you kind of settled in on as far as like consistency and how many videos you release and how quickly? Yeah, um, I try to get out um, a video a week. Um, I did. I have had uh, recently a couple of months where I've had to go every other week. So um, I, I find that once you kind of get over the hump of like um, getting a consistent amount of views, there's a lot of other opportunities that come to you. Mm -hmm. And then you got to kind of remember that the videos are the thing. Like you got to keep doing the basics and and sometimes it's it's really hard because you want to say yes to all these opportunities but you also need to make sure that you leave time in your week and time in your day to um, concentrate on what got you there, which was the videos in the first place. So you're saying you can be distracted by the shiny objects, whether that, that be money products in your case, affiliates or whatever it may be. Um, I, man, that's such a good point because you can really get bogged down by things that are not important things that at the, in the grand scheme of thing, things, yeah, you're, you're getting an email from this Chinese company who's trying to help, you know, you have you promote their pots and pans, but in reality, the reason you're getting these opportunities are because of the videos, right? I had to learn that early on with the podcast. Uh, it got fairly successful fairly quickly once I relaunched it and it was getting thousands of downloads, which is in the podcasting space is a large number. It may not seem like that, but it is. And so I was getting all of these offers and all of these things kind of pitched to me and, and my affiliate stuff was doing well, but I had to remember that, you know, when I stop doing the episodes, eventually it may not be immediate. And I've done this on YouTube where COVID hit. This is such a similar story. COVID hit. I was at home. My family was at home. I was like, oh man, these videos are doing good. They're making me a lot of money, you know, and I, I just wasn't making any new videos and I didn't feel the repercussions. Then it was six months down the line, you know, six months to, tw to 12 months where I'm like, oh no, my older videos were pushing me through this kind of lull, but now I have nothing, right? So understanding that what gets you there is the content itself, right? Understanding that is so important. Um, what's something you wish you would have known sooner? Like looking back at your journey thus far, two years in, and now today you're like, man, if I just would have known that sooner, I could have been even larger or had a better, bigger community. Yeah, I think um, I'm still learning those 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 tricks or those there's still a lot of, of roadblocks in, in my, in my process. So I think I wish I would have learned that you don't need to hit a home run every time. And I think that is a, um, I know it sounds kind of weird to say, but you put so much pressure on yourself of like, this video has to do X amount of views. And if it doesn't do X amount of views, then I'm, my, my day is ruined. My month is ruined. You know, it, I think, you have to look at it in a long-term way. And I am, it's, it's really hard to do so when you're focusing week in, week out. Mm -hmm. Like I put out a video, it needs to hit this many views. And if it doesn't, you know, you, you think it's a failure. But I found a lot of, go back, going back, if you go back over time, these videos that you thought initially were the failure because they only got, you know, a lower amount of views in the first couple of months or whatever have just kept on churning and, and accumulating more views. So it's, um, I, I wish I would just give myself more like grace in, um, in each video upload. What did you do when you got discouraged? Because I could imagine video eight goes crazy. Video nine, 10 might do well, but video 13 might be just a flop. How did you motivate yourself and get through the, maybe in your mind, like, am I pretending that I'm good at this or am I faking this whole thing? Or was that just a fluke mentally? How did you get beyond that? Because a lot of my listeners, people I coach and things like that oftentimes tell me 
when I get on these calls, it's not really like X's and O's of YouTube and the strategies. It's almost me in like a therapy session of just like, hey guys, listen, you're okay. You're going to do well. It's not always going to be sunshine and rainbows, right? So explain how you got through those downtimes when you already had a success. I, I think the biggest thing is just to keep keep your head down and keep and keep creating and keep doing things that that excite you that are keep doing the research i love the statistics of it and that's the part that i really like is doing the doing the video research on what's um what would be a good video idea or video topic and just kind of keeping doing those things that you really like to do and then getting better at it's always good to get better at a skill. So I've I've been trying to get better as a video editor. I've been trying to get better each time as, you know, every different aspect of it, writing titles, writing descriptions, all this stuff. You know, I feel like YouTube is like uh, five jobs in one, you know, so there's, you know, each portion of it is someone, it could be someone's job and you're trying to do it all yourself. So there's lots of growth opportunities. And I think focusing on the, um, getting from point A to point B, seeing all the, how far you've come is very, very important. It's also why you see a lot of creators when they find a little success and start making some money that they outsource the other stuff. So you start to see a creator that's found success. That's not very good at thumbnails. They hire a very talented artist or thumbnail designer. People who are not good with storytelling hire someone to teach them how to be a better storyteller. People who are not good like me of the behind the scenes things have like my wife in my case or other people kind of help them with the admin and behind the scenes things. It's where Early on as a creator, you have to wear so many hats and you're exactly right of understanding that you have gotten this far and you will again and knowing that you're going to get there. And that's such a beautiful kind of way of, of looking at it. Now, speaking of the process, give me and the audience listening, what is your full process from like ideation, creating a video idea all the way to post publish and what you do after you publish? Give us everything and how you do a video for the Butcher Wizard channel. I think it's funny that you bring that up because I have gone through all of the, um, the, I went through those same pitfalls. I went through editors, I went through, and, and they didn't kind of, it, it always just didn't pan out for whatever reason. And I always come back to doing it myself. But so for my, for my process in general, I have just a basic Google doc that I go through and I write down hundreds of ideas. Um, so I'll go through, I'll take, uh, several hours of, of a week and just go through and look at what's happening on my in my space on YouTube. My favorite thing to do is go into a different niche. So, um, you know, what else would my target person like to do? So I, you know, I've, they like woodworking, you know, I, my target person is like a, um, an older man, usually that's the biggest part of my market. So I will go and so I'll go into woodworking and I'll see what's happening in the woodworking niche and then use some of those ideas or gardening or just different um, tech, these kind of things. I've got that, so, that. that is that is so clever. So what you're saying, breaking this down into its simplest form, is that you're seeing what your target audience is, who your target avatar is. And then you're seeing where else they hang out and what else they're interested in and how those niches are capturing their audiences. I've never, I don't think we've ever talked about that here. That's very unique. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that no, was, no, that's, a, that's a great point. Continue on. One, I'm sorry. One of my, one of my videos has done really well is I did do a seven things I don't buy from Costco. Yeah. I got that idea from a tech channel that was seven things they don't buy from Best Buy. And um, I was like, I'm just going to cop, I copied you know, copied that whole topic, um, and made it my own. So, but anyway, so, um, next we'll kind of, we'll, you know, I'm having a shooting day. Um, I have four kids. I shoot in my kitchen. So again, it's very difficult. <laughs> to do so, so, uh, we'll try to get everything, you know, set, set up. I still, I'm, you know, I'm the least tech savvy person that's probably on YouTube. I still just use my iPhone and um and a shotgun mic so it's very low tech but again i can move it around i can um get the shots that i need for the different cuts um i try to make the shots completely different as far as um that's how i don't use multiple camera angles just use the one camera 
and um, you know, go through the shooting. Then we will go, um, I'll go through the editing. I'm still trying to find that perfect editing software. I'm sure it doesn't exist, but um, I just keep plugging away at that. And I just try to make it as interesting as possible. That's kind of, I'll keep a, um, when I'm going over my scripts and stuff, I'll, I'll put like a journal kind of like, and I'll write in the, in the margin, keep it interesting just to make sure. Cause a lot of times on my, with my topic, I will get into culinary teacher mode and it'll go, it can go over people's heads that way. So I'll try to like, keep it interesting, change the camera angles, say something funny, um, try to keep, I keep in some of the mistakes that I do just to make it more real and more interesting. So th- Inter- I love that. It's, it's making yourself a reminder of, hey, listen, this can get a little bit in the weeds, you know, like, hey, you may want to add some spice to it. Um, I love that. Now, you, you mentioned you've gone through some ups and downs when it comes to editing and figuring all that stuff out. You're still using your phone, which I love. Um, these phones that we carry around now with iPhones and Androids and all the things that the devices we have are just so good that it, it's, you know, yes, are there better options? Sure. You could buy a few thousand dollar DSLR mirrorless camera whatever, you know, there are options out there that might be uh, marginally better. But as far as just baseline, utilizing the the phone, the thing that you have, it's always a cliche, but the best camera you, you have is the one you, you have, you own. And so that's uh, that's important. Uh, I, watching a handful of your videos, I would say that it's, you can't really tell. I mean, it's, you, you know, now that you've said it, I might could tell, but uh, the audio is really crisp in, in your videos as well, using a shotgun mic. So uh, that's wonderful. Now, one of the interesting things about you is, as I've talked with you before we went live and, and then also just kind of looking at your channel, you've kind of monetized the channel in a very unique way. You had that video pop off and, and you, you sold a lot of stuff with your affiliate link, but then you decided to come out with your own product. And, and I want to talk about that process of how to do that and how you what you learned from that. But let's talk about how you make money. What are the different buckets is what I like to call them in which you make money on your YouTube channel? And, and maybe if you can give us on average how much you might make in a month. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I have AdSense, um, and, and that's kind of, you know, up and down with the, you know, everyone feels the up and down of the AdSense, but, um, that usually runs about, you know, 4,000 average four to 5,000 a month. Um, it can, you know, obviously goes up in in Q4 and that kind of thing. Um, but you know, it's, it, that's kind of the base level. And, um, I do some affiliate stuff. I have some affiliate links out there. Nothing too crazy. Um, some Amazon links from old videos. I don't usually, I don't do that so much anymore, but it was kind of, it's, it's in the archives. So it just kind of uh, goes on. It's, you know, d- d- you know just kind of rolls. Um, then um, with the products. So I, I launched my own knife line. Um, it's two different knives and um, that one does, you know, it's it, it's it's tough because uh, that one we launched in January. We've sold um, you know probably two thousand of these knives, so we've, it's gone extremely well. Um, I'm we're now on Amazon, so that's doing you know. It depends on which line you want to look at, but as far as revenue goes, you know, eight to ten thousand dollars a month on that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, I do some sponsorships here and there. Those were really big when I started. So right after that video popped off and I started getting more subscribers, like before, like a hundred, before that 150 kind of range, I did a lot of sponsorships. Um, but now I don't do as many, but that, so, you know, those are just kind of sporadic. The product launch, walk us through that. You yeah. were seeing a lot of affiliate sales from that video that did really well and from your channel in general. And you thought to yourself, I'm selling a ton of knives. Why don't I just make my own knife? So tell us the process of, of how did you go about doing that? Where do you start? Uh, and walk us through that whole process. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, basically what happened is uh, on, on those videos that did really well, they were all butchery videos. And I had these two knives that I used um, in a butcher, I've used in a butcher shop professionally, and everyone who was in there who, cutting meat was doing the same, using those same knives. And so those are the ones I suggested. And then I did an Amazon uh, Associates link, and they were selling hundreds of those a month. Um, so I was like looking through m- those reports. I'm like, maybe we should um, look into getting some knives manufactured. So we went into that process. Um, and, and going overseas and kind of going through the whole process of, um, you know, 
the, getting samples from different manufacturers, but then, you know, changing out handles and blades. And we went through several iterations to get to where we're at now. And, um, and, and, you know, I actually started out with a Shopify um, website and Shopify had a warehouse. They were doing the kind of the warehouse thing where they would like a 3PL where they would um, ship, you get an order, they would ship it out and they would take the returns and all that stuff. Um, so we did that for six months from uh, January of this year to June. So just l last month. Um, and then we, I decided to move to Amazon. Um, and so we're, we're in the process of moving all of that inventory to Amazon and um, it's going well. I've, it's one full month. It's just, it's going a lot better. So, so now you're primarily selling on Amazon through like, can you double dip by the way? Like, can you use an affiliate link to your own product and get the affiliate revenue plus the revenue you're making from the product? I'm curious about that. I have, I've heard that people have done that. Uh -huh. um, I have not, you know, Amazon is like this black box. They have, you can get, you can get bogged in with all of their, you know, um, fine print and stuff like that. So I'm still trying to figure out if you really can do that. I've heard of other creators doing that. Mm -hmm. um, right now they're like, they run a lot of different kind of programs. And right now you kind of already get that by using a, a link, a specific Amazon link. So it's kind of the same thing. Um, you, you kind of have with, with being a, a creator and a, a, a brand owner, basically you've got your foot in two pools. Like you're kind of, you're splitting mm. your, so they're not used to dealing with someone like me who's, or, or, who has an audience and a brand. So, but it also goes back to what we talked about at the top of this conversation in order for you to sell more knives, you have to make more videos. Right. And so it's kind of just like this ever churning thing of just like, Hey, the content is the fuel is the gasoline of, of the whole thing. Right. There's some, there's a bunch of parts, there's the engine, there's, there's the body of the car, but at the end of the day, the content is what fuels it. Maybe we should call it the oil keep it, you know, keep your oil changed and keep it updated all the time. Right. Is that you want to sell more knives from the butcher wizard brand? Well, the butchered wizard brand on YouTube better keep pumping out stuff. Right. Uh, whether it be there or on TikTok or Instagram. And, uh, man, I just feel like that you're at the precipice of just like you're, you're at the bottom of it making like 10, $15,000 a month right now. I feel like you could scale this thing to make a lot more money than that. Uh, obviously more products, more things like that. Um, in regards to your own product, how do you do it naturally within the video? I mean, obviously for you, it's pretty simple. You're cutting the meat and you're like, Hey, if you like the looks of this knife, I mean, this is my knife, you know, as you're talking, you kind of naturally throw it in there. How do you do it without trying, without sounding salesy? Yeah, I, I think just the fact if you're using it in your video, which is why I would say to other creators of like, if you're going to go down the product line, which I think everybody should in these in these kind of like tutorial based videos, you know, find a product that's naturally you're, you use all the time and then try to manufacture it yourself. So um, mm. that way you never are going outside to sell it. You're just using it. And then. I will say as I'm going through it, hey, this is my th this is the knife that I'm using. You can use another knife if you want. This is the knife that I have, and here's mm -hmm. the link. I just try to keep it very quick and very nonchalant because in in in, in the big scheme of things, I want people to buy more knives, but I really want them to learn the content more because they're at YouTube to get the content, not mm -hmm. to buy stuff. So yeah, you know. <laughs> That's an important comment you just made. It's because you have the mentality of what you just said. That's the reason why you're selling a lot of knives. Because if your main goal and focus when you went to make a video was, how can I sell the most Butcher Wizard knives? Your channel and content would stink. Let's just be honest. Mm -hmm. But you really have a heart for, okay, I really want them to know right? Like which one of these steaks is cheaper? How are you getting the most bang for your buck out of these meat cuts when you go to the store? That's my goal. But if while they're here, they want to spend some money and help me out and get a good set of knives, 
they can do both, but that's not the sole purpose of the content creation, right? And so you saying that is powerful. That's really what I want people to hear from this, this bit of the conversation is that, yes, you can sell your affiliate, you can sell your products, you can sell the sponsor, but if the content in general is not the hub of what you're doing and it's not the core of what, what the channel is, you're just going to fail from the beginning. And so I love to hear you say that. Um, we're in the realm of AI, and you already mentioned that you're not a very uh, tech savvy person. That's fine. But I will ask this question because it's a new question that I love to ask. Um, are you using any artificial intelligence tools uh, as companion pieces to help you with your YouTube channel? If so, what are they and what do they do? Yeah, I'll, I'll just kind of use ChatGPT every once in a while to um, what I've done. Um, actually, um, I know you've had Roberto Blake on your podcast before. Yep. He has like a set of prompts um, that he sells and it's like nine bucks or something. It's, it's awesome. And he'll kind of tell you what to type in to set up the prompt to like set up the chat GPT. So they know what your channel is about. And then you can start asking it questions like, you know, give me X amount of, uh, video ideas and things like that. Um, so again, I'm probably like, like I said, I'm probably like in stage, you know, 1.5 or whatever, you know, like, out of 10 on using AI and chat GPT to its full potential. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll use it for, uh, for um, different video ideas. And, and um, it's just, it is a good jumping off point. Cause then you can start like, okay, like I see where they're going with this. Can I, you know, take it a different level? Sure. What's next for the channel? Um, you know, short term and long term, the butchered butchered, the butcher wizard brand say that five times fast. What is on the docket? What do you got coming up? Yeah. So, um, we're, we're continuing to put out videos. Um, I, uh, we opened up a Facebook group, um, to kind of connect with the community because I, you know, the YouTube comments are, are, I, I can't, I, I can't even live in the YouTube comments anymore. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, let's, let's go somewhere else because, uh, you know, someone told me that people, um, especially in these, uh, kind of, tutorial niches like that I have that are men and, and older men and all this stuff there, they show their love by telling you you're doing everything wrong. So maybe that's how the, the comments, uh, but anyway, um, so we started a Facebook group that's going great. We're doing like a monthly challenge in there where we're going, I wanted to make it like a paid community, but for free where um, we're doing like, we did a ribeye challenge where I, I did three days, three sets of videos that showed them how to break down this ribeye. Uh, where to get it, tools and eat, all that stuff. So that's been a lot of fun playing with that. Um, I'm going to continue doing that, continue making videos. Um, we got a couple more products that are going to come out um, this year, fingers crossed. So um, are you going to expand beyond knives? So we have, we're going to have one more, we're going to have one more knife come out. That's the next thing. And then I want to do a cutting board because these, it's basically like trying to find what are the basic tools that someone would need to um to do what i do and that to follow the the videos so as of right now you know we have big plans for next year about some different like um slicers and grinders and different things that are more complicated to manufacture so um i'm just really excited about the future about all of it you should be uh, it's and to think that this whole thing started on YouTube, right? Like that's that's the beauty of, of this conversation and, and what I want to bring it back to. Um, if you want to go check the, his channel out uh, after listening to this and you're on a walk or something and you're listening to the podcast, it's Butcher Wizard uh, over on YouTube. Um, and I will have all of Brad uh, in his in his links down in the show notes for you to go kind of follow him and check check out what he's got going on to kind of see the things that we've talked about. But Brad, you have been a phenomenal guest. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. I, I really appreciate it. Like I said, I've been listening to this podcast, you know, before I started my YouTube channel and it kind of gave me the confidence to kind of turn on the camera. So I really appreciate what, everything you do. Yep. And we're now 240,000 subscribers uh, later for you and uh, only 83 videos. So you are doing something right, my friend. Keep up the good work and we appreciate you coming on the show.